What opportunities did you want to take advantage of? What was it about the machine in terms of what it did that you saw as an advantage? Well, we got the foil, um, the meteor, and um, we've had customers come in looking for foil, but unless you're doing 10,000 carts, it's not worth your time, you know, with all the stamping and everything else that you have to get. So this brings us into the short run. You know, we can do, you know, the person that walks off the street and wants only 250 cards, we can actually do that. We can do 100 cards if we wanted to. And by the way, does Vistaprint compete up here? I probably will. I mean, they're selling 500 cards for, you know, $10 in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, but and I don't uh, know if they're foiled cards at that no, price. No, that, that, that's the point. <laughs> that, that's why printers who want to stay in that business need to do something that makes them stand Upscale, out. Upscale, yeah. That's you need right. to move forward. Okay, Paul, same thing. What opportunities do you want to take advantage of? So, in terms of the finishing, what were the things you were looking at? Well, we're uh, looking at bringing the smaller customers back to us uh, with the small runs. We've been doing quite a few uh, larger jobs, obviously packaging, and um, this machine will help us do that. We'll be able to bring in the smaller runs and uh, turn them around quickly for the customers. So which machine have you... Uh, yeah. It's the, the Evolution. It's the 27 or 29 by 47 inch press. That's the big one. That's the big one. This one, by the way, got the, the... If you haven't seen it, by the way, the Evolution is a machine that can handle 29 inches by 47 inches. That's correct. And it got the most attention um, at Drupa uh, last year uh, because of its ability to take sheets that were printed by any process and then add all this embellishment to them. That's and so you'll have the biggest one in North America at this stage. That's correct. Um, First one in North America. So you expect your customers Canada. who have been giving you offset printed sheets and other kinds of big sheets? That's correct. Uh, yeah. Ah, that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So this is a big investment for your company. Huge. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it says a lot about a manufacturer that you had enough confidence to make this kind of an acquisition. Yeah. Okay. Um, Patrick, same question. Um. So uh, putting in this equipment, um, as I mentioned earlier, I really want to put life back into print. And uh, we already offer a lot of uh, services to our corporate accounts, and they come in with ideas, agencies with ideas. Uh, but with this new um, MGI uh, jet varnish device, uh, as mentioned, we can do shorter runs. Uh, everything is more unique. And because we put in the uh, variable data uh, feature of the machine, so that we can have every sheet coming off uh, the press with uh, custom foiling. Uh, that really just, you know, just sets us apart from uh, other people that can offer the same service. Uh, by the way, there was one offset manufacturer of a press that had foil capability on it. And they, they really got the, the whole industry interested in it. But it was so ineffective and costly that it all died. Mm. So you're now coming back with digital technology to do the same thing. And I think that's what makes this equipment unique is because it's, it's that one of one. Be able to make that one cart different to everyone else's. And as uh, Frank mentioned earlier, you know, you're not selling a thousand one, and you're selling one of a thousand. This is, you know, egg or the chicken for this kind of thing. But this is really a device that really caught our eyes and we wanted to dive into it. Christine, same question. <laughs> Well, I think um, I can speak from experience because I'm the only one here that can do it right now. Um, but that's uh, short-lived, I recognize. That, what she's um, saying is many of the other panelists, their yes. machines are on order. But um, uh, we've, had, um, we've had our machine for a year, actually. April 1st was our anniversary date. And um, it's allowed us to really expand our market because, yes, the business cards and all that are a uh, wonderful offering that you can give something that's really special but also being able to educate your clients and um, Frank mentioned this like with direct mail for instance the variable data component will you know boost you 21 percent you will add augmented reality to that you're at 37 percent with um, the tactile finishings that I can uh, provide with the varnish or the foil you're over 50 percent um, better retention uh, as you know opposed to just a direct mail postcard so I can go into a client and I can say that's a great postcard I'll print that for you no problem but I can also do this this and this that's so really going to make that postcard work for you and so I think it's just a matter of educating your client on what you can give them and I think the whole tech, tactile um, experience of the foil and varnish uh, is an easy sell. I mean, I, once I start educating my clients, I really don't have to do much past that, frankly. 
Uh, let me ask you a question that's not on the list. Um, you've now had it for a year or so. Yes. A How year, much exactly. has your business increased over that period of time? Well, um, I, six weeks ago, I would have said 25%, but after we just ran a rather large job, I can say we're probably at about 35%. That, that's impressive. <laughs> Ashraf. As we speak, uh, our inkjet 3D varnish has been installed right now in Edmonton. We'll be the first one in Edmonton. I've been in Edmonton for the last 40 years and uh, 28 years in printing industry. So I know quite a few, uh, uh, quite a few uh, uh, commercial printers as well as uh, other contacts that I feel that uh, this will enhance, this will bring up new, new revenues, opens up new doors, new clientele, uh, for example, doing business cards in the old ways, uh, race printing. Customers say, can you do two-sided race? And we always say no. And this way, now we can do that. People, customers asking, well, you know what? Vista Printing can do this for, can you do that? And I say, you know what? It's coming. It's coming. We want to do everything locally and keep the revenues locally. And by doing so, being the new technology, I find when you have a good staff working for you and they need some kind of motivation to learn new stuff. And so they tend to keep, they tend to be with the company for the long run because they know what, what, what you're thinking is to move forward. And so these advantages uh, internally within the company as well. Well, you have good staff, you want to maintain, but you have to give them something in return. They learn something new. So it's, uh, it's, it's a good marriage, I, I, I would say. Uh, and again, everything's done instantly. We can, we can give them a proof, a physical proof the next day. Uh, okay, this is how it looks like. If you don't like too thick, we can, we can narrow down the thickness. If you don't like this foil, we can change the foil. So that Vista Printing, for example, here's our main competitors, they get a surprise in the mail. Here they can come and see a physical proof. Uh, there's more confidence if, and, and we can give the product on time quicker than the old fashioned way. And again, short, short runs, uh, you know, uh, and by the way, the new, the old generation who runs this machine, the oil folding machine and the embossing machine, if you see the new generation coming up, they want all digital. They don't want to go and run those old, old machines. So if you look 10 years down the line or 15 years down the line, these people are getting retired now. Who will be running those machines? Okay? So, but if you put a young fellow from, from college, uh, or a young girl. A young girl, okay, from college. <laughs> you know, they will be more interested to run this uh, digitized world than running the old uh, letterpress, for, for example. Uh, so this is a future that that's why we feel that we should move, uh, move forward, bring something new on the table, uh, offer to our customers, hey, we can do this for you guys. Uh, you know, it just makes the company look much better. Uh, that's my point. Yeah, what, thank what's, you. What's interesting is you said the old-fashioned way, and yet we still make money from the old-fashioned way. And so really what you're finding is you've got to combine the old-fashioned way and the new-fashioned way, because that's where the money is going to be. That's correct. But eventually, I feel eventually these people are retiring. Uh, you mean the people who ran your presses? That's right. Presses or the foil presses or the embossing presses or the, you know, and I, I really feel if you put a young person there, he won't last for too long. But now, we get calls at RIT all the time. Uh, we need an operator of a Miller four color press. <laughs> Wait, we don't do that. No one does that at this stage of the game. So really you're going to have to train them from scratch. So that's the issue. However, new technology, again, there are plenty of people out there who can adapt and be trained on the new stuff very easily. It's not as complicated as before. In fact, um, um, our students at RIT used to do all the printing on the, on the Cunard ships, and they were offset presses, um, and, and then they converted over to digital. And so now they say, well, we don't need your students anymore because we don't need trained people. 
which is very interesting. One, it's an insult, but it's another thing to say that the technology has changed the nature of the people who run our machines.